the beluga whale, also known as the white whale, lives in large groups and are unusual among whales. They have no dorsal fin, large bulbous heads, and they can actually swim backwards. To feed, they produce sound to find and hunt fish and invertebrates, and they use sound to communicate. They're also known as the canaries of the sea because they make such a diversity of noises. They make chirps and whistles and gurgles and trumpeting sounds. They just make all kinds of sounds. In the U.S., beluga whales live in the cold waters of Alaska, and there are five separate populations. Of those five, the Cook Inlet population is the smallest, and has declined by about 75 percent. Subsistence hunting may have contributed to this initial population drop, but this practice was regulated starting in 1999, with the last hunt in 2005. Still, the beluga population here has yet to recover. We listed Cook and the beluga whales as an endangered species under the Endangered Species Act in 2008, and we had hoped that the population would start recovering, but we are still seeing a continued decline. And these beluga whales are only found in Cook Inlet, so if they go extinct, we don't think any other belugas will come back and populate this area. These whales spend most of their summer near Anchorage, Alaska's largest city, where threats to belugas are on the rise as the city grows. These may include diminishing food, habitat loss or destruction, pollution, toxins, and human-caused noise, which hampers their ability to feed and communicate. Researchers are trying to understand which of these threats may be impacting them most, but Cook Inlet is a tough place to work. It's really hostile for research. We have the strong tides, which makes it challenging for human safety, and we can't see through the water. It is very muddy, so we're pretty much limited to the part of the animal that breaks the surface of the water. And as a result, we have limited information about the specific population dynamics of Cook and the Beluga whales. Up until recently, information has mainly come from annual aerial surveys from aircraft and boat or shore-based photo identification surveys that use unique markings to tell animals apart. Scientists also use passive acoustics to listen for belugas, but none of these methods can detect much information about their health. So it's really been a game changer with, with the whole species in the spotlight designation. We've gotten more resources within our agency. For instance, we're able to use a drone to collect some aerial imagery of belugas in the wild, and we're hoping to learn some information about the age classes, information about the health status. And probably the most important bit of information that we'll get out of that is we'll be able to identify the new calves. And we're hoping if we keep doing this every year, we'll be able to get an estimate of calf production every year that will tell something about how well the population is doing. We are also expanding upon our biopsy studies, hopefully to give us some information about sex, the individual's reproductive status, some genetic information, uh, some contaminant loads. Public and private partners are contributing as well. Some are looking at toxin levels in the whale's prey, while others are analyzing beluga teeth to learn about their age and past diet. Others monitor water quality and how belugas react to boats, and more check to see if their behavior changes with increased background noise. All of these findings will go toward developing effective recovery strategies for this population. As for what you can do, if you're out boating, give belugas space. Don't drive right up next to them. Stay about 100 yards away. If you're flying over them, just remember that you're putting noise into the water as well, and so stay at least 1,500 feet above them. Report a stranded beluga whale as soon as possible, and that's if they're dead stranded or live stranded. The amount of information that we can learn from these animals by responding to a stranding is monumental, and it will help our efforts to recover them. Together, we can help beluga whales thrive in the dynamic waters of Cook Inlet. With continued research and good stewardship, we hope to see this population grow in the years to come. <laughs>